The following program is being brought to you on the Voice America Variety Channel. For more information about our network and to check our additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101. We're so happy you joined us this week. Over the next hour, you'll learn the tips, tricks, and vital information that will help you keep yourself confident and safe. Now, here's your host, Susan Bartlestone. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101, the personal safety radio show with an optimistic perspective on a sober subject. I'm your host, Susan Bartlestone. And I am so glad that you've tuned in today and decided to hang out with me for a while because it's my great privilege to spend the next hour with you, helping you keep yourself safe. We're deep into the month of December, a month that signifies healing and renewal or has a deep significance for a great many of us. And I know that you don't want to think about crime or violence at this particular time of the year especially with all the other depressing things that are going on right now, like the economy, for example. But, hey, hang in there with me today, because in that spirit of the optimism that I promise you at the beginning of each show, today and over the next two weeks, I'm going to introduce you to some very special people, people who've been victims of crime but went on to turn that experience into a positive and are now helping others do the same. So whatever your past, whatever your financial or family situation is, I think today's show will give you the encouragement that even if life seems bleak and hopeless, it can turn around. I know my guests have inspired me. I hope they inspire you as well. And I call my first segment, Read em and Weep. I'll be talking about a unique deck of playing cards. In addition to the usual clubs and spades and hearts and diamonds, these cards feature the pictures of victims of unsolved homicides, of missing persons, or wanted fugitives. Each card asks, do you know who killed me? Or do you know where I am? Or simply, do you know something about me, anything? These decks are distributed to prisons all over the country and even some in Canada. And as the prisoners play card games, the smiling faces of these unaccounted for victims flash before their eyes with the unspoken hope that the prisoners will interrupt their games, pick up a card, and take a closer look. The cards are sponsored by an organization called Crime Stoppers, which has branches all over the country and is produced in conjunction with local law enforcement by a company called Effective Playing Cards. And very shortly, you're going to meet Wayne, Cor- Wayne Cross from the Heartland Crime Stoppers Group and Robert Wagner from Effective Playing Cards, and we're going to talk about these cold case decks. Then in my second segment... I'm going to introduce you to Stephen Mariotti, who, after being mugged in 1981, quit his job, changed his life, and founded the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, which is known as NIFTY, which to date has worked with more than 230,000 young people from low-income communities all over the U.S. and around the world. And he is considered one of the leading experts in education for at-risk youth. I think you'll agree that I've got a unique and inspiring show for you today. So if you know someone who should be listening, who might not be, hey, send out a text message about us, send an IM, start tweeting if you're on Twitter, anything so that they can join us too. Okay, now I want to introduce you first. Let's introduce you first. To Robert Wagner, who's the operation manager of Effective Playing Cards, 
and to Wayne Cross, the executive director of the Heartland Crime Stoppers. Hi, Robert, or Bob. Can I Hello. Go, uh, hi, and hi, Good Wayne. Afternoon. Hey, how are you? Okay. Uh, Bob, let's start first with you. Now, am I, you're from Affected Playing Cards. Am I correct in, in uh, saying that there are more than 30 prison playing card decks currently in, in uh, play at this time? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've produced approximately 60 individual decks to date. 60? Uh, excellent. And um, I know I, I saw somewhere in, in one of the articles when I was doing the research that after the launch of one of these decks in Florida prisons, law enforcement received more than 60 tips about cold cases, some that were even 20 years old. And uh, I think one case I read was actually solved. Is, am, I, am I correct with that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's been extremely effective all the way around, uh, not only with uh, relation to the, the individual cases themselves, but we have found uh, law enforcement gets a lot of tips uh, relating to other non-specific cases, uh, not relating to the cards, just because, as uh, Wayne will tell you, the uh, Crime Stopper programs and the uh, anonymous tip lines just work really well. The cards work as a, um, I don't know, more of an incentive, I guess. It gives the, the inmates uh, a chance that they know that they can talk to someone anonymously and, and therefore it just opens up a lot of doors. That's amazing to me. How did this uh, come? How did these cold case card decks come about? Well, I think it goes back again to Mr. Wayne Cross, whom you have online, uh, and his friend Danny Turner. They uh, were based on, of course, the Iraqi playing cards, as everyone will recall, that came out during the war. And I guess Danny and uh, and Mr. Cross were talking about the cards, and Wayne, from his law enforcement background, said, so "Why can't we just?" Do something like that to put in the prisons. And that's, that's not, basically how it started. I'm not familiar with the Iraqi decks. What, what was that? Well, they, uh, they, those were decks that had uh, uh, different Iraqi generals. and It was actually like a most wanted deck. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I do know. Yes. That's right. These were these were the um, sort of the marked men that we were looking for in 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 Iraq. Correct. So so Wayne, you were you were the one that came up with the idea then for to to use it for cold cases. Um, yeah, actually, the first very first deck we did was a fugitive deck, and it was a local deck here in the uh, county that uh, Heartland Crime Shopper serves, and. From, and that was based on the uh, Iraqi deck. And then we had uh, uh, a special investigator with the uh, Department of Law Enforcement here locally that then approached us and said, why can't we use the same concept of the fugitive decks and do a cold case homicide deck? He was actually, at that time, was um, in charge of a cold case assessment team here locally. And um, he thought it would be... Uh, would work for the uh, cold case and endangered missing persons that they were working in. That's where we came up then with the uh, cold case uh, homicide decks and uh, endangered missing persons. And we did a local deck here, and we were very successful with that. We actually solved uh, one case within about two months after putting our putting that cold case deck in the uh, county jail. And uh, from that, then we expanded to the state prisons. And and from that, over the last three years, that's what's uh, happened nationwide and actually internationally. There's cards all over the uh, – uh, there's cards in uh, Australia. and uh, and uh, But it uh, that's how it all started. Wow. Okay. That, that, uh, that just sort of blows me away. How did you decide whose picture – uh, to put on it, I guess. I guess Wayne, uh, I should ask this of you: Who decides the pictures that that go onto the decks? Well, here locally, when we did the very first deck, we had probably uh, over 120 cold case homicides and uh, endangered missing persons, and locally, so we had to come up with 52, which is what's 
in a deck of cards. So mm-hmm. local law enforcement, through this cold case assessment team, uh, they then developed and came up with 52 of the cases. And um, we, the Iraqi deck that uh, Bob mentioned earlier, the uh, Saddam uh, actually was the uh, ace, and all the most wanted people were the aces, and then it went down from there to the deuces. So what we did here was lo- uh, locally was the oldest cases became the aces, and then the next oldest became the kings and queens, and we worked our way down to the uh, deuces. But it was uh, all the cases that were submitted to us, and all the cases that have been submitted nationwide were selected by law enforcement. Uh, we actually went to them and said, y'all pick the cases you want to be in here. And uh, since we only had 52, um, you know, we can only do 52 of them. And how many decks are, are, are actually in um, in play? I, I think I read a million. Is that right? How many? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're actually uh, approximately a million and a half decks since we started, well, around three and a half years ago. A million and a half. Uh, who funds these decks? And how did how did you find uh, effective playing cards? Were you were you involved with Crime Stoppers? Are you talking to Wayne? Well, either either one. Uh, I, I guess Bob. Maybe. Uh, how did they find you? Or, or were you involved with the uh, with the uh, Crime Stoppers? Well, no, I've done a little bit of all types of work in the past, but we, we have worked closely with law enforcement agencies around and about. Um, and, again, Wayne and uh, Nanny Turner, who is the uh, uh, principal that started the company for, I guess, lifelong friends. So I kind of kind of came in on the, the shirt sleeves there. Oh, I see. I see. So Danny Turner is, is part of, of Effective Coal uh, Playing Cards. Yes, ma'am. I see. So, and that's how you, you did you you didn't produce the Iraqi deck, did you? No, no. No. Okay. All right. I think let's um let's talk about crime stoppers then, Wayne, cuz cuz that's the that was the, you were the driving force uh behind this. So talk a little about what it is. Uh for your listeners who don't know what Crime Stoppers is, Crime Stoppers is an international uh, organization started back in 1974. And uh, basically what Crime Stoppers says is we're, we're separate from law enforcement. We are a, it's a, a civilian volunteer board of directors. Uh, the whole theory is that there's somebody out there that knows something about every crime other than the person that committed it. And there's a lot of people that don't want to talk to law enforcement, either because of retribution or, you know, whatever reason, they don't want to talk to law enforcement. So what Crime Stopper does is you can call in tips about crimes, and you can give your information completely anonymous. No one ever asks your name. Uh, everything we do with the tipsters is based on a code number that we give them. We never ask their name. Nobody knows. They don't have to worry about testifying. They can give us the information. Crime Stopper then passes it on to law enforcement. And if that information then leads to an arrest, uh, the tipster is then eligible for a cash reward, which we also pay anonymous, anonymously where no one knows who they are when they collect their reward. And with the cards, uh, There are obviously people in jail and prison that don't want to talk directly to law enforcement, so it gives them the opportunity opportunity to pass their information on, um, and then we pass that on to law enforcement, and and if it leads to an arrest, we pay a cash reward. What we found with the cards was... Um, Wayne, let me me stop you right there. Sure. Go ahead. We're going to talk more about these cold... Case playing cards and crime stoppers in just a second. There's mm-hmm. plenty of show left to tune in for, so please start tweeting about us. Don't go away. The Internet's number one talk station. Number one talk station. VoiceAmerica.com. 
After more than 17 years experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories. Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime. How to respond to danger in 20 seconds or less. Check out www.crimeprevention101.com for more information. Talk, talk, talk. That's all we do is talk. If you'd like to talk, call us toll-free right now at 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. That's it. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Hi, Susan Bartlestone here. And if you're just tuning in, I'm speaking with Bob Wagner from Effective Playing Cards and Wayne Cross from Crime Stoppers, and we're talking about the cold case card decks. And you can find out more information about Crime Stoppers. The U.S. organization is www.crimestopusa.com, and we're going to give uh, Wayne's email uh, organization also. And if you're interested in effective playing cards, it's www.effectiveplayingcards.com. And I'm going to link both of these organizations from my blog site, crimeprevention101.com. And from there, you're going to be able to share each and every show with your, with your friends. You can put it on your Facebook or your Twitter page. So no one has to miss any of these shows. And before we, uh, we pick up our discussion about Crime Stoppers, I just have to tell you one thing about My Mobile Witness. And My Mobile Witness is a free service that transforms your camera cell phone into a personal safety device. This is one of my sponsors. And if you're in a stalking situation, if you have an order of protection against someone, if you witnessed a crime happening, or if you just find yourself in any kind of situation that might be potentially dangerous, you're going to want to check out My Mobile Witness. And there are special offers available for colleges and universities. So go to MyMobileWitness.com for more information. Bob and Wayne, welcome back. We were talking about Crime Stoppers, which is a community-based uh, crime-solving program, and people can can uh, give information about cold cases or whatever. And I, I think I read you um, you pay up to a thousand dollars for a little bit. Yeah, it's different all over the country. Every program is a little bit different, but uh, generally a thousand is the uh, up to a thousand dollars is the. Uh, base for most Crime Stopper programs. Some pay a little bit more depending on um, uh, their board of directors and what, but uh, uh, basically you can say it pays up to $1,000 for any information on any any uh, crime, uh, whether it's a wanted person, whether it's a crime that's uh, been committed and they're looking for the people who did it. Um, so it's up to 1000 now, where does the money for the rewards come from? Is, is this a membership-based uh, group? You pay dues, or how does this work? Every program is different. Uh, fortunately, for the state of Florida, we actually have a state statute uh, that $20 out of every criminal fine throughout the state goes to Crime Stoppers, and that's what we use. Uh, that's our money that we use in to pay rewards. There are some states that don't have... Uh, a uh, state statute that deals with that, and they then go with uh, fundraisers, and they, uh, uh, you know, get their own money through people who donate money to Crime Stoppers, either through 
uh, just uh, general fundraising. I mean, general donations are fundraising. But uh, Florida, luckily, has the uh, state statute where uh, it's not. We don't. There's no tax money. It's strictly just uh, uh, the actual criminals who are being convicted and being fined. The money comes from them to pay Florida's uh, rewards. I like that because hopefully that won't, that means you won't get caught when they start cutting all these state budgets. I <laughs> hope. <laughs> how many? Do you have any idea how many Crime Stopper programs there are in the United States? I, I was in. I was on the um, that Crime Stopper USA website. It's pretty awesome looking. Yeah, there. Every state has Crime Stoppers in uh, oh, in Florida. State? Yeah, every state, and actually, it's international. Uh, so UK, uh, Canada, Australia, uh, all of Europe. Uh, it's actually an international group. But uh, in Florida, we have the 67 counties in Florida. There's 64 of the counties that actually have a Crime Stopper program, and each state is different as far as how many Crime Stopper programs they have. But uh, there's Crime Stoppers in every single state uh, within uh, within this country, and again, internationally, they're all over the world. Do you have contact with each other um, in some formal or informal way? Yes. Uh, each state has their own state organization that has uh, uh, meetings yearly, and then we also have uh, uh, Crime Stoppers USA that meets yearly and then Crime Stoppers International that meets yearly. Uh, and we also, I mean, everything we do is we work hand-in-hand hand and we help each other and uh, so, I mean, it's uh, uh, very well organized as far as uh, throughout the country, throughout the, the world, actually. Now, Bob mentioned, Wayne, that, that you have law enforcement background. Uh, tell me a little bit about your background, because I didn't know. Uh, I started with the Sheriff's Office here locally and uh, spent 26 years with the uh, Sheriff's Office and retired as a major with the uh, Sheriff's Office back in 1999. In 2001, I took the position of exec, the first position of executive director for Heartland Crime Stoppers, which encompasses three counties within central Florida. Uh, but, mm -hmm. uh, but my background is law enforcement. I spent my I whole life doing that. About how many members does the Heartland Crime Stoppers have? We have a board of directors of uh, 17 members. Um, that's the volunteer uh, board of directors that actually runs Crime Stoppers here in our three counties. And um, every law enforcement agency within our three counties, which is 37 law enforcement agencies, are involved here locally. Oh, I, it, it, are civilians also involved in this, or is it just the... Uh... All, uh, all our board of directors is... Uh, uh, civilians, we have no long. We have a uh, uh, members that are not voting members that are law enforcement, but the actual membership of the board is strictly civilian. There is no law enforcement mm -hmm. members that are, and it's the whole thing is based, crime stoppers is based on the citizens, the media, and law enforcement working together to uh, solve crimes. And but our our organization is strictly civilian. Oh, okay. What do you want to see happen in the future for for Crime Stoppers and or or for Heartland Crime Stoppers particularly? Well, as far as the cards go, uh, it all started here locally in 2005, and it is now spread all over the country. Uh, my hope and effective playing cards hope is that uh, eventually every state in the country would have uh, the cold case playing cards within the state prison systems where the cards are being given out to or being sold to the inmates of every state. Right now, we're a long way from that, but that's our goal is to get all 52 states involved. Um, so that's our, our goal for the, for the cards. Well, certainly if you can show success rates, you know, in, in terms of solving these cold cases, I think that's that's going to be very good incentive. How much does a deck of cards cost? Uh, the decks of uh, the decks of cards 
the ideal situation, which is what we're trying to get every state to be involved in, the cards cost uh, nothing uh, other than every state sells DEXA cards to their inmates uh, at a very reasonable cost, uh, less than $2 a deck of cards. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, there is no real cost for anybody that wants to do a deck of cards. It's just to get the state involved and get the statewide involvement where every state uh, is and still is selling just a plain deck of cards to inmates within the prison. They're actually selling decks of cards that have uh, pictures of these victims and asking for information. Uh, they're all casino uh, uh, decks. I mean, they're nice decks, good decks, better than what they were buying before. And uh, they're paying no more for them than they were before. Yeah, excellent. And Bob, what do you uh, see for the in the future for effective playing cards? How are you? Uh, how how are you uh, seeing this program? Well, we're basically we're working hand in hand with Wayne. Uh, Hi, that's right. The same idea. We're trying to get the cards into as many locations as we can. The the, the basic premise, uh, of course, of Prime Stoppers is that someone out there besides the perpetrator has information that can lead to solving a case. So in the case of the cards, we would like to get this information into as many people's hands as possible. The more people we can get to be looking at these cards, uh, and we're not so strictly related just to the prisons. Uh, we've tried very hard here recently, and hopefully in the next year we'll make more efforts towards uh, being able to put the cards in retail locations, uh, you know, such as oh, uh, Kmart excellent. or Walmart. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what about casinos? Yeah, because it's, of course, not just prisoners that may have some information. It could be uh, anyone that would look at a case and say, well, it just might ring a bell. So that's that's basically our our hope and, and direction we're trying to do is get the cards into as many locations as possible. We work with, uh, of course, continue to work with the prisons. Um, as Wayne said, it's it's working really well. We changed over the last year to going directly to working with prison vendors and canteen services, and in that manner, the the state or law enforcement really doesn't have any, any cost in producing the cards. We produce cards and sell them directly to the vendors. That's fantastic. Give out your um, your information again uh, for effective playing cards. If people want to get in touch with you. Uh, the easiest way is www.effectiveplanecards.com. Terrific. And Wayne, if they want to get in touch with uh, crime, the Heartland Crime Stoppers? Uh, HeartlandCrimeStoppers.com. And uh, just the contact information on there, which is actually Wayne at HeartlandCrimeStoppers.com. Terrific. And the uh, for the Crime Stop USA, it's www.crime. StopUSA.com. Bob and Wayne, thank you so much for being here today and for talking about this. I, I, I hope that we get a lot of people calling both of your groups to, uh, to, to start more card decks going on. Thank you so much, and I apologize for, for uh, the, the little mix-ups we have getting going. Yeah. You know, that's the radio biz. That's show biz, right? Yeah. No, I have Thanks for having us. Like Thank like you a thirty so much. second. Can I give you thirty what? seconds more? Sure. Uh, they do work in the state of Florida. We solved over ten of our cold case homicides when we first started the deck. We said if we solve one cold case homicide, everything we've ever done is worth that one cold case homicide. And we've solved over 10 of them here in the state of Florida. There have been cases solved in uh, California. There have been cases uh, solved all over the country just based on the decks of cards because the, there's people there that know something about They've never been asked. And uh, Tommy Ray, which is the special investigator with FDLE that first came to us with this, uh, his statement he made, which is really says it all, is that to take 52 decks 52 cards within a deck would be like going into a prison and trying to interview everybody in the prison about 52 decks, which is impossible for an investigator to do that. So by having those 52 decks, 52 cards in a deck, 
they are thousands of people that are seeing those cards and uh and uh, it just worked i mean it worked very important contribution to crime prevention. Thank yeah. you so much. And I'm going to put links to both the Heartland Crime Stoppers, Crime Stop USA, and Effective Playing Cards on my Crime Prevention 101 website. And when we come back, I'm going to be talking with mugging victim Stephen Mariotti about educating young people to choose entrepreneurship instead of crime. Wonderful concept. Stimulating talk it gets those synapses in the brain firing really fast. All the time. The number one Internet talk station where your opinion counts. VoiceAmerica.com. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories susan shows how it's done in her new book think fast and prevent a violent crime how to respond to danger in 20 seconds or less check out www.crimeprevention101.com for more information talk 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 that's all we do is talk If you'd like to talk, call us toll-free right now at 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. That's it. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. This is Crime Prevention 101. Thanks for tuning in today. And don't forget that you can also check out my blog site, crimeprevention101.com, where you can look at what uh, the topics that we talk about and see pictures of my guests. You can also get on my mailing list from there. You can email me from there. So make sure you check out crimeprevention101.com. Now, my next guest is Stephen Mariotti who, as a result of being mugged in 1981, founded the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, which is known as NIFTY, when he discovered that if low-income youth are given the opportunity to learn about entrepreneurship, their innate street smarts can easily develop into academic smarts and business smarts. So far, NIFTY has helped more than 230,000 people worldwide. Hello, Stephen. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Now, Steve, you've been quoted as saying you can make more money running a business than robbing people, and you don't up, end up in jail. Seems so simple. But let's go back to the very beginning. Talk about what happened to you to bring you to that point and that realization. I'm glad to talk about that. In 1981, in September, um, I was um, mugged uh, by some young people over a very small amount of money, and um, it was very humiliating to me. And I asked myself again and again, why would somebody um, demand $10 from me when they could have sold me something um, or asked me to invest in a business deal? And uh, it ended up turning out great for me because uh, six months later, I sold my small business um, in the spring of 1982 and spent seven years as a special ed teacher here in New York City. And my specialty was working with children that uh, were not doing well in school and were dropping out. And I just focused on one thing, talking to them about how to start a small business, how to make money, how to invest money how to do basic sales, open a bank account, and I found that a lot of children that were in poverty had a gift for small business. And uh, I think it should be a national program where every child in America learns how to start a small business before they turn 18. And that was how you got the idea for Nifty? 
Absolutely. Around about 87, um, I started to talk to other teachers about uh, the idea of, of teaching children how to start a small business, particularly those that, that were not that interested in school and were not doing well. And they became intrigued and started asking me for my lesson plans. And I began to think, uh, jeepers, I could start a nonprofit that specialized in trying to create a global movement where um, we could get tens of thousands of teachers involved and even millions of children. And 23, 24 years goes by, and Nifty is now uh, globally $23 million budget. We've got 1,600 teachers globally. We're in 13 countries. We work from China to India to Great Britain to Ireland. We're all over uh, the U.S. We're booming in Israel and South Africa, and we're in Hebron. Our curriculum has actually been translated into Arabic. Oh, outstanding. Thank you. How, how, I mean, really, I... I, I'm, I'm a little surprised. I knew I knew it was good, but wow. <laughs> now, how old are the kids that you work with? Uh, we specialize in the ages 11 to 18. Uh, we work exclusively in low-income communities, and we work with about 65,000 children a year on a global basis. About 25,000 of those are in the U.S., and another 40,000 are overseas. A big thing we do is try to connect children globally uh, through video and through the Internet. And uh, it's a, on average a 100-hour program. Every child uh, uh, opens a bank account, does a business plan, does posters, does flyers, does business cards, makes their first wholesale purchase, and does their first sale and tries to generate their first profit. It, it's, when it works, it's a very, very beautiful way to teach math, reading, writing, and critical thinking. Sure. Now, are you saying that this is actually, because of the teachers involved, this is actually part of the, the school curriculum, or is this done after school, or how about would they 80, work it into the... Uh, uh, globally, about 80% of our programs are actually part of the school curriculum, so the child actually is in a class called entrepreneurship or small business or uh, a name that it, you would recognize as being about uh, the, the field. About 20% of our programs are in the summer. We call those biz camps. We have those all over the world and um, um, uh, or after-school programs. We partner with the Boys and Girls Clubs, YMCAs, and uh, we view us like a software program where we're a specialty organization that has become, I think, the world leader in teaching children how to start small businesses. And you can you plug and play us in almost any um, academic setting for kids 11 to 18. Hmm. Well, that, 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 of course, is the future of the way to reach these kids, I think. Thank um, you. And, and, I, I agree with you. And these are, these, are these mostly at-risk, at uh, low-income communities, or have you now expanded to... Because, um, by the way, we know that criminals don't only come from those areas, right? We do know that. Oh, absolutely. Our specialty, because we have limited resources, is to work with children that don't have a lot of resources and have been raised in difficult situations. A vast majority of those children are wonderful, wonderful people. Their parents are, are wonderful, and the communities are great, and we're really proud to be part of them. Our focus is to talk to children that have not had a chance to own assets or have been exposed to the craft and concepts of ownership uh, to expose them to the idea that they can own a building, that they can own a small business, that they can be part of, a, of someone else's business, but always try to see if they could negotiate some ownership. Uh, so our specialty is talking to people who don't own about how to own, and in the same concept and, and in the same conversations to be able to work basic math, reading, and writing, and critical thinking into the mm -hmm. lessons. That, that's really what we do. Kind of sneak it in do. there. I like that. Thank you. I might, have, I might have done better at math myself if I had that. I, I, agree. I, I agree. I think that we're all pre-wired for business and yeah. that when you're teaching business, you can teach a lot of other things. And I, I think it's uh, really beautiful. What I'm really proud of is that we've built a coalition of, of people that are supporting us from Harvard University to Goldman Sachs to Microsoft. Uh, we have almost 800 uh, supporters around the country, uh, Diana Davis-Spencer, Oppenheimer, um, I can go on and on. Uh, 
of, of these uh, communities uh, of individuals and businesses that have made a commitment to youth entrepreneurship and are helping us to learn to do it better, but also helping us to finance it on a global basis. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. That that is truly exciting because that's the way you can I can see this really expanding globally the way you want it to do. Now I, you have an alumni section on your website. Can you talk a bit, little bit about some of the businesses that have been started by your alumni? And you also have an award section. So you know, just give it, give uh, my audience an idea of some of the kinds of businesses that the kids have uh, come up with. I I love talking about this. Uh, You're talking to someone who has the largest collection of student business plans in the whole world. (laughs) At one time, before my assistant put her foot down, I had over 76,000 uh, business plans by young people. And, wow. And it was, it's my, actually my hobby. So um, we have over 340,000 graduates, and each one has done a slightly different business. Uh, we have food businesses, car repair businesses, um, uh, house, house repair businesses, um, it, every kind of unique insight uh, that you can imagine a, a young person having into a market uh, we we have seen. I think my favorite graduate of all time is Malik Armstead. Um, he just emailed me about an hour ago, and I want to give a plug for his business, but he was actually my own student in 1989. Very proud of that. And now has one of the most successful restaurants in New York City called The Five Spot. It's at um, a 70 Myrtle Avenue, for those of you who are going to be in Brooklyn. And uh, he has created 30 full-time jobs. He owns three buildings. Uh, he, he, I remember when he opened, the neighborhood is a beautiful neighborhood, but it was you know, having some problems economically. And he's given rebirth to a five, six-block area. We've got uh, graduates like that all over the world. And my, my own thinking is the best way to solve this, this horrible plague of, of poverty that's haunted uh, you know, men and women since the beginning of time is to really try to have policies and educational strategies that will create hundreds of millions of business, small businesses so that somebody's unemployed or they, they don't have a boss they get along with or they're being underpaid or they're unhappy, you know, which plagues you know, a billion people probably, that they have the basic skills to be able to change their life, find a need in a marketplace, start a small business, and really make a run for their lives. I, I think that's terrific. And anytime you want to go and eat in his restaurant, because, you know, I'm based in New York City. <laughs> I'd love to go there. And oh, my heavens. That. If you send me an email, I'll send you an email back, and I'll meet you there, and I'll buy you dinner. <laughs> Fair enough? <laughs> you got it. You got it. Now, I, I went on to the website, and I looked at some of the alumni. And um, if, you, if you know what these are, I'd love, because some of the names are so intriguing, um, we have a Vivian Chow, and her her company is Jelly It. I'm, do you know what that is? Um, you know, I'm going on our website right now, and I'm really in, embarrassed that I can't picture uh, Vivian. Um, but I'm going to find her on our website, and if I see her picture, and there was I will... another name that I thought was so interesting. It was called. It's from Avingston Arnold, and it was called Scrump Diddlyumptious. And I was kind of wondering what business that was. Oh, I think that is the, um, I think that's a popsy cake business. I think that that is a cake with a, um, a uh, you know, a handle on it that you can eat. Um, but those are, those are two great examples of young people that have created businesses, and it's just so much fun. Let's just take a quick pause here, Steve. Uh, there is more Crime Prevention 101 coming up, more about NIFTY and entrepreneurship. Don't touch that mouse. Streaming live, the leader in Internet talk radio, voiceamerica.com. 
After more than 17 years experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.crimeprevention101.com for more information. News. Opinion. Your voice counts. Call toll-free 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. This is Susan Bartlestone. And I want to remind you that Crime Prevention 101 is available on iTunes. So you don't even have to be at your computer to listen to all this goodness. I've been talking with Steve Mariotti, founder of NIFTY, the uh, national, oh my God, the entrepreneurship program. And I totally blanked out your name of your organization, the entrepreneurship organization that teaches kids how to make money without turning to crime. His website is www.nf, like Frank, T like Tom, E like Edward, nifty.com. And you can get more information about the program there, including how to start a program in your area or even volunteer to help out. And let's just talk a little bit about that. If, If someone wanted to bring this program into the school, what would they do? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, the program is called the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, and our acronym, acronym is NFTE, which is pronounced NIFTY, uh, which a lot of people call us. And all our materials uh, can be bought on our website. Our publisher is uh, Prentice Hall or Pearson Publishing, which is the world's largest publisher. But you can also buy them directly from NIFTY at www.nfte.com. Um, if you're in one of our 12 cities, which you can find on our website, then um, we train teachers in those cities, and then we provide support to those teachers in those cities. But if you're not in one of our cities, you can always buy all the materials and just start your own program and call it whatever you'd like. And we we help, try to help people in every way we can, um, but uh, we focus on 12 cities in the U.S., and uh, are there volunteers also? Can people volunteer to, uh, Absolutely. to work with we these have, programs? We, we have almost 6,000 volunteers on a global basis. They do uh, group mentoring. We uh, uh, specialize in group mentoring. Um, uh, they do business plan judging, and um, uh, they do guest speaking. So we use about 6,000. Uh, if it, somebody goes onto our website and sees the 12 cities that we're in in the U.S., uh, they can send an email to the executive director in that city, and they will get a call back immediately and will be a guest speaker or a business plan judge or part of a group mentoring experience. If they're not in those 12 cities, it's it's harder uh, for us to work directly with the volunteer. Um, we always take financial uh, support, and uh, the person could sponsor a school or a child or buy books for a child. Uh, we always need as much financial support as we possibly can get. Fantastic. And um, is there anything else uh, that you can think of that's important about the program that I may have forgotten to ask you? Um, you know, I just think it's a very simple idea, the concept of, of teaching people to own and the whole issue of who owns and, and how we can get uh, universal ownership so everybody, uh, you know, has part ownership because um, it's how wealth is created. And that it's an idea, I think, that over the next 20 years will replicate all around the world and that in uh, 20 to 25 years, I think we'll have a billion 
children going through the program. Um, it may not all be nifty, but it'll be. It's going to become a, a global community, and I think it's a very healthy, positive thing. I'm thinking you should do an adult branch of this because there's, you know, with what's going on in the economy and people people losing their jobs and everything. And I think there's. I think there might be room for. If my radio show ever goes under, well, you know, I may you, have. I thank may you have, for bringing that up. We do have the second top selling book for adults um, uh, at the community college level. It's called Entrepreneurship. Uh, it can be bought on our website. Um, 428 um, community colleges actually use it as their text now. Um, Oh, really? Yeah. For adults? So, for adults. And if you send me your address, I'll send you a copy uh, free of charge. Oh, and, thank you. Uh, I'd love it if you read it. And, um, you know, if you, if you think it, it, it's good, if you could refer people to buy it and to use it. We don't Absolutely. work directly I'll... with adults, our specialties kids, but um, we do have materials for adults. Well, I will, I'm going to put uh, the links to your program and, and um, a good description of it and everything on my uh, crimeprevention101.com website and also on my host page in voiceamerica.com. And I will definitely put the book up there because I'm serious when I say that. People, more and more adults, are, are going to have to be looking into being entrepreneurs themselves. I agree. I agree with you. Not only in this country, but all over the world, um, it, it really is the best way to get people employed and to create wealth. Um, and I appreciate you saying that. I, I agree with you. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a wrap for today. I want to thank you so much for being with me today. I and enjoy it. Like that, it was great fun, and I, I, I'm amazed and, and thrilled to bring this information to my audience. And like I said, I'm putting, putting up your links, your contact information. It's all going to be on my website. And I just want to tell you out there, even though we're done for today, you and I will be doing this exactly again next week, same time. And I've got more shows coming your way about healing and renewal and giving back in keeping with the spirit of the season. Uh, you, next week, uh, you're going to hear uh, from a man who, after having his home burglarized, started a neighborhood watch program and then developed an online neighborhood watch program where he gives away free tools to um, communities and individuals to help them prevent and fight, fight crime in their area. I've got the mother of two daughters, who were victimized by a, a former neighbor who was a pedophile, and she became a private investigator for the sole purpose of bringing him to justice, and he's now serving life in prison because of her. And she's got a nonprofit foundation for victims of childhood sexual, sexual abuse. You're going to hear, want to hear about her story. She did it all from a wheelchair. And then you're going to hear from a man who became a police officer because of the murder of his father, and he later rose to the rank of police chief. And I've got the wonderful story, uh, uh, a woman who was sexually abused, sexually assaulted, and were by uh, people in a religious community, and she founded an organization to help victims of abuse by religious leaders. These are amazing and inspirational stories. It would be a crime not to listen, so stay tuned. And stay safe. We hope you got some useful information and inspiration this week on Crime Prevention 101. Susan Bartlestone invites you to join us again next Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific at 8 p.m. Eastern Time here on Voice America. If you want to learn more about Susan's guest, sign up for her newsletter, or find out about upcoming teleseminars and workshops, go to www.crimeprevention101.com today. Have a great week and a safe week.
Thanks again for listening to the preceding program brought to you on the Voice America Variety Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the preceding program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. 